Are you ready? Stand by. Welcome to the Three Gun Show, brought to you by Armalai. This is episode 141, and I am your host, Dave Hartman. My guest this week is former MMA fighter and current hashtag only shoot open shooter, Josh Freilich. But before we get into the interview, a couple things. If you like this podcast and you want to support the podcast, you can do that in a number of ways. I'll get into them real quick here, and there's links for all of them at threegunshow.com slash support. You can find affiliate links there to Amazon, Brownells, Cabela's, and Optics Planet. Uh, we get a commission when you make a purchase through those links, and uh, always appreciate that. Also, the Three Gun Show logo t-shirts are for sale. You can find that there as well. And lastly, you can buy Armalite Three Gun Gear, which I'll have details on after the interview. And as always, I'm thankful for your support. So any way you do it, totally appreciate it, and uh, helps me to bring content like this to you. Josh Freilich has come on strong in open or unlimited division in the past couple of years and has created a reputation for shooting more rounds in a week of practice than some of us do all year. He's also a very big proponent of shooting open division, pioneering two red dots on both his shotgun and PCC. If you follow Josh on Instagram, then you're probably familiar with the awesome hashtag that he created, only shoot open. And if you tap on it, you'll see all Josh's pictures. And trust me, he lives it. <laughs> Show notes can be found at threegunshow.com slash episode 141. Now enjoy this one with Josh Freilich. Josh, welcome to the Three Gun Show. Well, thanks, Dave. Thanks for having me. Man, I'm, I'm excited to have you here, dude. I feel like this is uh, this has been a long time coming. So you and I shot together last year at Hurricane Nationals. Hurricane Nationals, absolutely. Yep. Uh, yep. Three Gun Nation uh, 2016 Nationals in uh, Virginia, VIR. Yep. Um, I, I I was talking to Kalani Laker recently. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we were commenting on like how close the race was in open yeah. for that for that match, and he was saying that he honestly thought that he got uh, beat in that match because you were shooting such a great match. And I I stopped and I was like, dude, I was so upset by the rain. I didn't even know what was going on around <laughs> me. I had no clue that there was an actual. Uh, Pretty good race going on between yeah. uh, you and Kalani Laker. Yeah. No, it was a good match. That was the first match I had an opportunity to shoot with Kalani. Mm -hmm. uh, I shot with White Sides. And, yeah. You know, I, I know those guys a little bit. I've known them via phone call and, and internet, you know, forever. But it was the first match I got to shoot with those guys, and it was pouring rain. So everybody's goofing around and laughing and, yeah. you know, having a miserable time. And um, I was, was a lot of fun. too much. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's a lot of that. We totaled a minivan that weekend. Oh, you did? We were the ones that totaled it. Yeah. Adam and I, were, we took a rental, and they evacuated the back, right? Yeah. And so they're like, everybody's got to get out of here. And we've got the minivan, and it's like, well, we got to get out of here because otherwise it's just going to flood. Right. So they got this possession of cars, and we're, we're driving through, and uh, you know, there's a river at this point going across the, across the road, <laughs> and we've got to get it out of there, right? You know, so it's like, okay, water over the hood. Oh, Total. man. I mean, what do you do? Did it, did it lock the engine up? Yeah. Oh, yep. it did. Yeah. Yeah. So we had to get pulled out of there. Oh, man. Um, so <laughs> now is there any pending litigation or can we talk about <laughs> this? <laughs> that's, a, that's a good question. Uh, well, did you guys get the damage waiver? Yeah. Well, no, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I did get a call at one point that said, hey, uh, just tell the truth if somebody calls you. Because we didn't do anything wrong. Uh, right. Know. Yeah. But it's still a cool story. I mean, <laughs> yeah, we totaled the thing. So, uh that was interesting. It was madness all weekend. Just <laughs> soaked. Uh, but, yeah, we, Kalani and I were – every stage it was plus or minus. Yeah. Um, and uh, he ended up getting me by, like, 16 seconds. I had two bad ones mm -hmm. right at the end of the match. And uh, last year was the first year that I took majors and, and wanted to go after this thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was maybe my fourth major. And it was, you know, shooting with guys that I've looked up to. Yeah. And, you know, so I get out there and I, I'm in a – tight match with somebody that you know i've respected and then looked at as you know the guy yeah absolutely and, you know it's close and it just blew a stage you know blew it by like 16 seconds and mm -hmm. so i'm like shot okay on the last one he got a couple more seconds on me and uh it was a good match i mean overall good experience sure I, you know i mean i did it again this year shooting with uh clint and jerry right again two guys that i looked up to absolutely and still look up to and um, got out there, shot. You know, we were we were trading stages. Jerry which which match is this? 
Uh, that was a south or the east regional. East regional, okay, yep. in South Carolina. Yep, yep. So I shot with those two guys, Greg Jordan. There were a bunch of guys on the squad, and um, Clint and Jerry and I were trading stages again, right up to long range. And uh, that's that's my nemesis at this point, right? I uh, like this match, for example, that we're just shooting here at Nordic. Um, got eight solid runs and long range, just blow it. Really? Right? So, like my strategy all year has been. Uh, as I try to get better at long range, it's been I have to win. I have to take 10 seconds or I have to take 10 stage points on every stage but long range and just hope I hold on. <laughs> just hope. Um, it's a miserable feeling. I, I, you know, sooner or later I'll get this long range thing figured out. But so far, man, it's a, it's a bad deal. Sure. That's awesome, man. So, J- Josh, let's take it uh, take it back a little bit here. Okay. Uh, why don't uh, you know? This is the first time you've been on the show. Yeah. Why don't and first time we're really sitting down and uh, talking again because I was so miserable at, at uh, nationals. <laughs> I wasn't talking to anyone except for swear uh, words. Yeah. Um, give us an idea of who you are off the range, and uh, and and then we'll kind of transition into how you got into shooting sports. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm a husband to a beautiful wife, Jennifer. And uh, three beautiful kids. So Aiden's my son, who's 13, and I've got Hannah and Skyler, who are four and five. So cool. um, I play dad when I'm not shooting guns, and uh, my kids are starting to get into the gun thing too. My son just started shooting a few stages with me. This matches with me. This. Oh, last really? That's great. Yep. How Dude, do you feel about that? It's good. It's good. He doesn't. He doesn't love my coaching sometimes, right? <laughs> like I was the same way with yeah, my dad. Yeah, exactly. But uh, overall, uh, it's fun to watch him like the same things that I like, mm-hmm. right? Uh, he's 13, so I'm not as cool anymore, right? Right. Uh, this year, or suddenly, I'm not very cool to him. Um, but the gun thing, we still share. So that's a neat thing. Yeah. It's you cool know. to have, like, that common ground, something you can bond on. Yep. Yep. And so um, father of three, uh, white-collar sales guy by day in the tech industry. So um, I do business-to-business sales, uh, selling IT. Okay. Um, and so it's couple different worlds you would think yeah right? no kidding like the guys at work they think i'm crazy for shooting guns the guys that i shoot guns with they think i'm crazy for wearing a suit all day <laughs> you know and it's like actually it's pretty similar right like yeah. i go head to head and i compete against people at work and uh i go head to head and compete against people when i shoot guns cool so you know i'm driven in in both environments by mm-hmm. the win right i mean we want to be successful and as a sales guy you know uh, when you win you take a check right yeah. if you don't you don't it's mm. true kind of the same deal in shooting well so for the uh the last couple minutes here you've mentioned uh um a lot of different things that kind of point to maybe you're a competitive person <laughs> just a little bit yeah just a little bit <laughs> yeah so you uh, you have a um a history in in sports outside of the shooting sports yep and and i think that um you know some people have told me oh you gotta ask him you gotta ask him so tell tell me what uh what did you do before you were, were shooting guns? <laughs> well, I'll give you, you know, I'll give you, I'll go way back for a second and we'll get there where I think you want to go. Um, but I grew up with a brother who was four years older than me, right? Mm-hmm. And so the two of us were head to head. I was big for my age. He was little for his age. And so like we'd wrestle and he'd kick my butt. And so it always drove me to just get a little better or work All a little right. harder and that kind of thing. And, uh, and I've always been very, very, very competitive because of it. And that's part of it. Just the family. My dad's competitive. My mom's not. But everyone else in the family really is. And so sports through school until I started causing too much trouble and, and actually didn't finish high school in the traditional sense. <laughs> uh, ended up going back after I got my head on straight a few years uh, after. But um, during college, uh, I got into mixed martial arts. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I basically paid for a chunk of my education just fighting and local fights and really really got a kick out of it right nice um what was cool was you know i I needed to cover you know basically my rent payment Mm -hmm. and food right like books and stuff like that i was taking student loans no big deal right i'll pay that back later right uh but i covered the rent and covered the food uh you know cage fighting and uh got to do what i wanted to do and loved to do so um pretty cool part of my life you know what, what so what drew you into that now you mentioned like wrestling with your brother did you yeah do you like uh organized high school wrestling or anything a little bit um but again uh you know 10th grade i stopped going to high school mm-hmm. um got a interesting past with uh you know addiction and some of that stuff which also drives my success in the shooting sports and mm-hmm. anything else that i do is when i'm into it i'm all into it and so um 
didn't finish school, didn't do the the wrestling or any of the actual senior high athletics, um, but came into college, was out of shape, and went into this boxing and wrestling club in St. Cloud, Minnesota, right? So I get in there, I'm on an elliptical, you know, <laughs> just dumb, right? Like nobody th- looks cool on an elliptical, right? <laughs> it's impossible. Uh, and uh, these guys start coming in, and I'm, I'm watching all these guys, you know, boxing and wrestling, and I'm like... Hey, can I can I join you? Right, like uh, I and think I like, can. Yeah, fight. sure. Yeah. Get, fun, I get over here. <laughs> That's about it, too, right? <laughs> and they're like, "Yeah, you can you can come over." And uh, so I just thought it was a cooler way to get in shape, yeah. right? Because I was in, I was not in good shape, and um, so originally went over and started working out with those guys, and uh, you know they humbled me on day one. It was it was it, looking back pretty cool. Little 135, 135 pound wrestler, all American was like my training partner the first day and i was like 260 and uh i'm like i'm not gonna wrestle that guy right and he whooped me like just dropped me over and over and over and so learned some lessons learned some humility i was coachable that day forward and um just stuck with it loved it right Mm. it was head-to-head competition and yeah you know it i didn't know it then but i mean that's how i'm driven that's how i'm wired right i've got to be competing um to really feel fulfilled so Okay, yeah. so what 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 time period are we talking about here for your MMA yeah. cage fighting career? Yep. So uh, probably two thousand six. Okay. Through ten. Now, so that's kind of before it was like I guess what you would call mainstream. Like yeah. Even now, it's still kind of fringish, but yep. you're seeing you're seeing it on like most televisions when you go to a bar, right? Yeah, for sure. So back when you were um, when you were doing it, was it like? Uh, kind of a verboten sort of thing make maybe that drew you to it a little bit as yeah, well for sure it was right on the edge right yeah. this was chuck liddell days yeah. you know guys running around with the mohawks and you know uh, i mean that was the deal is it was that was exciting too right uh-huh. it was kind of cool to be in college and be the fighter you know? right I mean, yeah it's kind of neat but chicks dig it chicks dig it yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure uh no that was cool right and that piece I wish it had been more lucrative, right? Yeah. Almost kind of like what this is, right? We get to shoot guns. We get to do what we love to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, pretty hard to make any money doing it, right? Yeah, Um, definitely. There was the same way there. I mean, you get a check and, you know, you partner with companies and you find ways to to make it all work. But, um, yeah, you do it because you love it, Mm -hmm. right? Right, which is why everyone does shooting, right? Yeah, yeah, same deal. Yeah, I mean, there's... We're at the uh, Nordic Vortex Trigun. There's, what, 200, 250 people here? Yeah. And most of them are doing it because the sheer joy of, yeah. of competing and the joy of pulling that trigger. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. even if you, you you make a living doing it, you could make a living probably making a little bit more money doing something else. Yeah, right? absolutely. Right? I mean, so you have to love it. Selling VCRs. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you're going to make any money doing that. More yeah. than shooting. <laughs> Good point. Good point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's probably accurate. So, Josh, uh, the the amount of training it takes to, like, not get your butt whooped mm-hmm. in, like, an actual physical manner. Yep. Um, it's probably a lot, right? Yeah. And so, you're, you, you've got school, and we were talking about that earlier. Is like when we were in college, we had all kinds of time, time to do all kinds of things. And you yep. had the freedom to, um, you know, make your schedule flexible as you yep. want it to be. Yep. So what did your, like, training regimen look like? Yeah, so I, I did get to do whatever I wanted to do. And you, like you say, you don't want to get beat up, right? That'd be right. embarrassing. Yeah. Uh, so that's not the goal. <laughs> it would be like, a, a, you know, completely against everything that yeah. we've been programmed for in yeah. our DNA for thousands and thousands of years. Like, yeah, let me just go out and get embarrassed in front of 5,000 people. That'd and be and physically time. whooped, yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I took it pretty far. Um, so... I'd wake up and I'd go for a run, you know, in the morning. And I used to have this route, bridge to bridge, Sauk Rapids, Minnesota, St. Cloud. It was about five and a half miles. Mm-hmm. And uh, just go for a nice jog in the morning, most days. And then uh, I'd go to class for a couple hours. I'd get some weightlifting in. And then uh, get some Brazilian jiu-jitsu in, a little rolling in the afternoon. Uh, after class, go home, get a couple other things done, eat. And then I'd usually finish the day with boxing or Muay Thai. So... I'd have three good hours wow. of training in, plus, you know, the jog, which was just, you know, something to get the day started. Um, I used to love running. I don't know. I don't, I don't love running anymore. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Huh. 
How many calories were you eating at that time? That's, I mean, that's a yeah. lot of training for a day. Yeah, so serious, serious calories. Um, somewhere in the 7,500, 8,000 wow. range. Um, you know, I did triathlons for a little while too, and it was, I actually put on weight um, during triathlons, eating the same amount I fought, mm-hmm. or, you know, was, was eating when I was fighting. So, like, just a ton of calories. You had to, you know, peanut butter on everything, um, <laughs> you know, yes. o- oatmeal and, you know, pancakes and syrup constantly I mean, whatever like, like a dozen eggs yeah oh yeah tons of that so it depended right right if i was in training mode or cutting mode oh know. yeah yeah so you know there, i'd go super lean for a month and a half leading up to you know a fight i'd go carb heavy if i was trying to put on any muscle mass or anything like that right you know just after a fight and so it was interesting because you had these different phases and mm-hmm. that was fun you know i took all that stuff probably too far i was down at like Four and a half, five percent body fat, and just, oh yeah, you know, dehydrated but, out of your mind. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, I always find that really funny because oh. you know, um, and and not funny like in a good way, but just odd. There th- with uh, nutrition for fighting, and uh, and for weightlifting, right? Yeah. You have to make a certain weight class, and so now you're cutting, and the easiest way to cut is water, yeah. right? Yep. And so you're taking like salt pills and yeah. this and that, and drying yourself out. And then your cognition goes away because your brain runs on water. Yep. So now you're trying to be sharp and fast in a fight and or sharp and fast in like weightlifting or something like that. Yeah. And you're uh, you're dehydrated. You're not at your peak. So it's You get like 24 hours to put it back together. Oh, okay. So that's usually the deal. You weigh in the night before um, and then, you know, it's Pedialyte the moment you step off the scale. Um, depending, uh, the higher up you go, sometimes it was an IV. Um, right. You know, they'd just get you straightened out. Yeah. Um, but either way, you never felt your strongest the day of the fight, right? Mm-hmm. And so, like, the last fight that I did, um, I I walked around at, like, 207, and I just fought at 205 instead of 185. I was just sick of it. Cause, did you feel better at that yeah. time? Oh, yeah. yeah. I felt really strong at that weight. But um, the best guys, they cut the weight, and they're still really strong, right? right? I mean, there's an art to cutting weight effectively that I never put together. Yeah. You know, I just felt like a mess <laughs> typically right did you have like a n- nutrition coach or anything um no uh, I, I really didn't so was it like bro science where yeah <laughs> this works for this guy and I'm uh, gonna, well I'm gonna use it for me that was it right so like it was egg whites you know and carrots and green beans and chicken and you know i'd eat red meat a couple days a week you know so yeah. it was just stuff i threw together right i know this is lean right i know right. no carbs in it you know so I'd be all right for cutting. And so we did a lot of that. Yeah. So I, I didn't fight that much. You know, I only fought, I think, seven fights um, over the four years. The first two years were training, right? Mm-hmm. You had a lot to learn before you yeah, jumped no in the kidding. cage. Um, so, I mean, I didn't have some super successful fighting career, but it was fun, right? Yeah, no kidding. And made a couple bucks doing it. Right. Cool phase of my life. Something yeah. to tell the daughter's boyfriends. Yeah. <laughs> So, by the way, I compete with firearms, and I used to beat people up for a living. Yeah. Okay? So, you could be next. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. So, yeah. Josh, what did, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about the, the addictive personality and getting, yeah. getting into something. And um, I think you first came on my radar after we met at uh, Nationals for a lot of the training videos that you do. Yeah. And the... Uh, uh, number of rounds you throw down range is pretty impressive. Yeah. So what, how does, how does like your, your experience in MMA or in cage fighting, uh, translate over to what you're doing now? Did it teach you like some sort of like training dedication or? Yeah. Yep. For sure. Um, it really it's every day. You just don't take days off, right? Like I don't need to go crazy wild every day, mm-hmm. but I need to do something that increases my fundamentals on a daily basis. You know, I've heard guys say, you know, I got to do something gun related, loading accounts and stuff. No, it doesn't. Um, in my opinion, right? Yeah. So like if I want to get better at what I'm doing, I need to do the things that I want to get better at right. every day. Like I can reload lights out, right? Uh, I, I mean, ammo, <laughs> like actually making bullets, right? right? I could do that, but I'm not going to get better at my stage planning, you know? Mm-hmm. So like I work on those things every day. So, um, you know, I just got <clears throat> into this structure. I like structure. I need it. I kind of crave it. And so, I mean, every night before the girls go to bed, my, my daughters, um, 
they watch a show. So it's 30 minutes. I do my dry fire, right? Mm -hmm. I've got my basement's silly. Like if people don't, didn't shoot then they came into my house and be like, this guy has lost it. Right. And my <laughs> wife probably thinks I lost it. Uh, but the basement's just targets, dry fire targets everywhere. And, you know, I spend a half hour dry fire and either, you know, whatever rifle, pistol, shotgun every day, um, every day. Yeah. Yeah. So not each one for a half hour every sure. day, but a solid 30 minutes. And then some days if I feel like, uh, I want to keep going. I put the girls to bed, help my wife do that, and then I'll go back down for another half hour, hour. Um, so that's the dry fire. I do that no matter what. I'll dry fire tonight. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't last two nights because I was, you know, after, right. after 10 hours on the range, you know, whatever. But, yeah. Just need I just, a nap. Yeah, just need some sleep for sure. Food and sleep. Um, but, yeah, just dry fire every day. And then uh, I live fire as much as I can. Uh Funny story on that. Um, so I've got a house that's right. It's technically in the city. And uh, so technically I was only supposed to shoot once a month on right. my property um, for, uh, for target practice. Well, I lived there for two years and I shot every single day, right? I learned to shoot at that property. Like uh, a couple of years back we bought... My son and I decided we were going to get into shooting together just for fun. Mm -hmm. and I just bought, like plinking? Kind yeah, of just plinking. And I bought uh, 30, it was like 30 or 32 buckets of bullets, those golden bullets. Yeah. 1,400 rounds per. We shot the whole thing that <laughs> summer. I, I got an Advantage Arms like uh, Glock upper. You yeah, know? yeah, the 22 and, yeah, uppers. Yeah. yeah, and we went in the back and we shot, played horse uh, every night. You know, we'd play horse. And so I shot, you know, for two years straight and... Uh, one night, the mayor and the city administrator came out. It was like 10 o'clock, or not 10 o'clock, probably 8 o'clock at night. And they knocked on the door, and they, they're like, well, you know, technically, you're only supposed to shoot once a month. I'm like, well, that's not going to work because, um, you know, I'm like, this is what I do. Like, mm -hmm. like, I have this job. I'm a family guy, and then this is what I do. And uh, awesome people, right? And they're like, hey, how about we work together on this? How about we make something happen? And so I came to the next couple of city hall meetings. We all worked together. You know, I wore the suit there, obviously. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Played I the mean, part, right? Yeah, you look like a, like a, a reasonable person when, yeah. you're <laughs> when you're dressed up. Tattoos aren't all hanging out. And, <laughs> yeah. You know, I even shaved a little uh, before I went in there. Trim it up. Yeah. <laughs> but we figured it out. So now I shoot twice a week at home. Okay. And, and how did you guys come to twice a week? Is a So the answer was um, I, I came to it. Because they want, they originally said once a week, and uh, would be reasonable. And I said that's probably not reasonable. Right now, I'm shooting six, six or seven days a week. Um, if I do two at my own property, and then I practice two nights a week at a range that I'm a member of up here, and then I shoot a match every week, I can consistently do at least enough, in my opinion, to stay to stay active, mm -hmm. right? And so that was the deal. They were fine there. Um, and so we settled on it. So twice a week, I get to shoot at home. And then twice a week, I go to the range, and I, I get some work in for two, three hours. And, right. Um, works out. So do you have, like, a, like property out back or something? That we're, yeah. Yep. Um, you've got, like, a decent backstop. Is that why you're good at pistol, good at shotgun, and uh, not good at rifle? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, actually, it is. Uh, so, like, I, I I'm have. a smart guy. Yeah, you are a smart guy. You're sharp. <laughs> you're picking up what I'm putting down. Uh, so I've got a hill, and uh -huh. it goes down into, like, uh, lowlands. Okay. Right? And the lowlands uh, are tall grass, and sometimes they're wet, sometimes they're not. Um, but either way, I've got 50 feet or so that's just solid. I can run around on it all year long. Mm -hmm. um, in the back, it, it gets harder to get mobile sometimes. And so I'll hang steel out there, and I'll rip shots at them. And then when they go down, they fall into the water, or they fall into whatever, and then they're gone. Right. Um, and so that's been an interesting piece and that's that is why the shotgun work is solid because i can work on that constantly sure pistols you know coming together pretty nice and uh the rifle's just not <laughs> right it's just not so uh good news I, i'm on a waiting list at uh at this club that we're hanging out at today i've uh, been on the waiting list about a year it's pretty hard to get in here yeah but uh, i should be in soon and we can go out to 400 yards here and so uh i'll be here two or three days a week shooting long range until i figure it out nice yeah Nice. Now, um, when you started shooting competitively, did you start with three gun? Nope. Did you shoot some USPSA? Yep. So, well, so uh, my first introduction to any shooting sports was uh, I, I was shooting full autos. My brother and I just went and rented full autos at a local gun shop. Mm -hmm. And the guy's like, if you guys really like shooting guns, you should try out this IDPA thing. 
He's like, <laughs> you could bring whatever gun you have, and you could just go shoot this. It's it's real. It's like what you would actually see in the street. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, that sounds pretty cool, competing with guns. And so I went to a match, and uh, I was like, yeah, that's, that is cool, right? I mean, the first match, I like – pushed up an imaginary dumpster yeah. that I like crawled into because I was down an alley or something like that <laughs> and I was shooting all this stuff and I'm like this is a lot of fun you know uh shot that for probably three months and then uh some of the guys told me there's this other sport USPSA that I could go and try that out and my first match I, I shot with uh his name's Steven Zerwas he's a master class open shooter and he was just peak at that point just mm -hmm. crushing and uh, I'd never seen an open gun, right? Oh, and okay. So this is how I got into the open thing. Uh, so I'm shooting with him and, and Casey and a couple of these other guys. Casey's the GM p production guy up here now. And uh, What's Casey's last name? Casey Reed. Okay. Um, just a stud behind his uh, whatever he shoots. I don't know. Some metal gun that doesn't hold enough rounds. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so I shot with those guys, and I watched Steven run his open gun, and my eyes just boom. I'm like, done. Never shooting 10 rounds in a mag again. <laughs> Uh, and uh, seriously, within like two weeks, I had an open Glock, which was a bad choice after all. But, but uh, I built this thing out, comp on it, you know, everything. But, man, watching that open gun the first time to me was just like, it was amazing. Yeah. You know, this guy just crushing a stage. It took me like twice as long to shoot, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so ever since then, I shot USPSA then for probably three or four months. And uh, the season ended. And that was about it. Right. And um, I just kept shooting at home, kept shooting at home. And then spring came around and I shot a couple of USPSA matches again. And then a couple of the guys were going to come out to Minnesota three gun group. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, I've got guns. You know, I can I can come out. You know, I've got I had, I had like a pump Mossberg shotgun, you know. Right. Um, I put a big tube on it before I came out because I didn't want to, you know, not have enough rounds. <laughs> I was an open shooter, right? Like I wanted <laughs> rounds. So uh, you had your open gun <laughs> and your Mossberg pump? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's and, awesome. Yeah. And so come out and shoot guns with all the wrong guns. And, um, it was great. And I got smoked, right? I mean, you got Jake, Latoll up here, you got Nathan Payne, you got all these Adam Maxwell, all these guys are here at the match. And just, I mean, I wasn't even close, right? right. I thought it was pretty good. I was not pretty good. Uh, I got smoked. <laughs> and, uh, so that's what drives me. That's the fire. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and then go home and I'm like, well, I've got to get better. I got to work on all of these things. And, um, so I put, I, I did probably close to a hundred matches that year. Oh, wow. Um, I mean, we can shoot three, four days a week yeah, up here. It's right? crazy. So probably about a hundred matches that year. It's amazing. Uh, you're still married. Yeah, <laughs> it is amazing. So <laughs> she's a saint. Yeah. So, um, and then, uh, this last year I, I dialed it back a little bit, probably shot, you know, 60, 70. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's comfortable once, twice a week. Yeah. But yeah, you know, so Shooting the USPSA got me excited about the open thing. Um, shooting an open shotgun for the first time really got me excited oh, about bet. the open thing. And uh, I'll never go back to anything but it. Yeah, yeah. well, hashtag only shoot open right on yeah, your shirt there. Yeah, that's the deal, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all these silly tube-fed guns. Yeah. <laughs> no thanks. Yeah, I, Rob, uh, Tate, we were squad together this weekend. He goes, don't you ever feel like you might be cheating. And I'm like, don't you ever feel like you're shooting the wrong division? <laughs> I'm like, dumb. You know, anyway, you know, everybody's got their thing. That's the popular one, right? Yeah. Loaded yeah. by the tube. But um, I just love them open guns. Yeah. I like to shoot a lot and shoot fast. Shoot a, shoot a lot and shoot fast. I dig it. Yep. Well, so when you went to that, that first match and got your butt handed to you by limited shooters and tack op shooters, mm -hmm. then uh, – you said that you had to go home and, and figure out, well, I need to get better. I need to work on this stuff. Yeah. Um, do you set like training plans and then how do you choose like a training plan? Yep. So I did it all wrong. Originally I just shot a lot, mm -hmm. right? Like yeah. a lot of guys do, right? Mm -hmm. It's just, I got, I've got to buy ammo and I'm going to go out back and I'm going to shoot at targets a lot. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I got a little better doing that cause I shot a lot, you know I mean? I was shooting pallets of ammo, right? <laughs> I mean, I was getting a little better, but, uh, I got hooked up. I mean, I'd say the biggest progress I've made was is in the last 12 months. And uh, so good buddies of mine, Josh Ernesty and Mike Hall up here, are USPSA guys. They don't shoot any three-gun. Mm -hmm. um, but Mike's a GM uh, open shooter. Um, they're both M-class pistol shooters. And they're running dry fire, you know, par times. We're going back and forth, with, you know, 
chasing each other on par times. I'm getting videos of them, you know, at night of, hey, I ran two, 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 and you know, whatever, right? And I'm like, dang, I'm like, I gotta beat him. So I go downstairs and I'll start working <laughs> on it. I'll send him a video back. Well, I beat you by a tenth, you know. And so we just push all winter long and made some like huge that. progress. That was the deal, right? Those two guys uh, pushing back and forth mm -hmm. all winter. I mean, that's where it came from. So. I just take all the pistol drills that they run, and I do them on all three guns, right? So any of the reload drills, I hold myself to the same par times mm. that, um, you know, like in Ben Steiger's book. So, you know, that's what Mike started with, a lot of the basic, you know, four aces and a bunch of these drills. And uh, I just run them with pistol, and I run them, expect to run them at least as fast with my PCC, uh, at least as fast with my 223. Mm -hmm. um, Shotgun's real hard to keep up, but I race those guys a lot. Our, a lot of our live fire training is drills and going head-to-head, -head, so they'll be on the line and we'll be doing unloaded starts, and I'm racing pistol guys with my open shotgun, uh, and, you know, that's how I've gotten better. That's cool. Just, just pushing, <laughs> yeah. It's good to have uh, training partners like that. Yep, and they're driven. Like, like, if I take a week off, I'm getting smoked <laughs> at the next match, and it pisses me off. So I've got kind of these two worlds, right? I, I really take pistol serious just because those guys do. That's all they do, mm -hmm. and they're good buddies, and, you know, we shoot a lot together. And so I take that USPSA game pretty dang serious too, um, just like I do the three-gun game. But uh, I don't know. It spreads you a couple different ways. Yeah, it, well, it's difficult to manage that. Yeah. I mean, there's there's so much going on with uh, with three-gun. Yeah. Um, and the, the reason that I like shooting three gun is because I don't need to be as nearly as ballet precise as yep. I do with pistol shooting. For you know, sure. you can take an extra step here or there. Yep. And as long as you're transitioning your guns faster or running harder and yep. stuff like that, it's uh it's just a completely different game. So yeah. how do you, how do you balance the two as far as, uh, what you train for? It's hard. It's the next match, right? So okay. it's always the next match. Um, like the, I'm sorry, uh, next local match or like no, the next major? Next major. Okay. Everything's planning for the next major. Okay. I shoot one a month and I travel wherever. Um, so the next match is that pure gold match. Mm -hmm. I'm oh, shoot yeah, the shot, shotgun match. Shotgun and PCC. Uh, North, South Carolina, something like that. Oh. Um, with three-gun okay, nation. I thinking of something else then. Yeah. So I'm going to go out to that match so it'll be shotgun. Uh, and it'll be PCC. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to put the pistol away for a little while. And, you know, I, I just put the 223 away for a little while. All right. And I'm just going to do almost all my training on those. Once a week, I'll pick the other guns up. Just because the last thing I need to do is get rusty on a pistol. Yeah. Um, that's not going to help anything. Especially so. with friends like that, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I'll be out. I'll still be shooting it. Uh, it won't work there, will you? So. But I concentrate the energy, right? Like, right. if I'm going to work on something for a half hour today and that's all I get to, uh, I'm going to put it in on PCC or shotgun and it's always fundamentals. It's nothing crazy. You know, I'm, I'm working reloads. I'm, uh, it's open, but man, when you, when you're shooting open and you've got one reload to do during the stage, if you blow it, like you lost five seconds, right? Huh, yeah. You know, so, or unloaded start with an open shotgun. Like if you can't do that in two seconds, like you just lost time. Right. Um, and so I work real hard on the basic fundamentals and, the shooting just comes. I mean, I just shoot, and I shoot a lot, so, I mean, it works out. Um, <laughs> especially when you shot – I shot PCC all winter, getting ready yeah, for Optics yeah. Nationals, which was a fun experience. And then uh, – you, so you shoot uh, a rifle, 9-millimeter rifle at close-range steel, and then you break out the 12-gauge, like, you're going to hit the target. Right. right. You've got a pattern now instead of a 9-mil. Right. Right. And so that – I don't practice actually shooting the shotgun nearly as much as the other guns. Just because if I can hit it with a nine, you know, a nine millimeter AR, mm -hmm. uh, twelve gauge is going to go down. And you run like same dots on them, so you get the same side picture. Uh, yes, I do. Yep. So I run all the same optics on all my guns. So I have a very, very similar sight picture on PCC, shotgun, pistol, mm -hmm. all of that. Yep. Okay. Yep. So let's let's talk about that um, optics nationals uh, experience. Yeah. So that was the that was like the first optic optics nationals, right? Yeah. And so they ran uh, carry optics. Yep. Uh, open. Open and, and PCC. PCC, right? Yep. And uh, so basically anything dotty. Yeah. <laughs> All the cool guns. A dot or dot like. Yeah. Uh, got to uh, got to run in that match. Yeah. And that was in uh, Florida. Yep. Um, frostproof. Yeah, frostproof. Uh, God, what, what the what the heck is the name of the range? Uh, Universal. Universal. There you go. Universal yep. Shooting Academy. Yep. What was that like, man? It How was, was it? it was it was good, you know. Um, so it was another opportunity for me to mature in my shooting. 
Uh, I felt like I didn't place where I should have, um, but it was interesting. I, I put, can put a finger on where, where it where it went wrong. Um, so I got I shot with Max, uh, who's a stud behind his PCC and Terran, and Terran take takes risks and doesn't move that fast, mm -hmm. right? But he gets all his hits. That guy can shoot yeah. lights out, right? Yeah. So he's taking risks on swingers and stuff like that. I'm like, well, I got to do that. Taryn did that. <laughs> you know? Uh, so I'm doing that. Uh, Jason Edwards is on our squad. He's the same way. The guy just shoots lights out, right? And so I can move faster than those guys. But I'm taking the same risky shots as they are, and I'm not. Pay it's not paying off for me, right? Mm -hmm. And so I blew some stuff down there. And uh, great match, tough stages, a lot of fun. Um, but. Three Gun Nation Nationals last year, Optics Nationals this year, and the East Regional. All matches where I shot with people that I, you know, I've been looking up to, and none of those three did I feel like I played my game, you know. And right. so um, this weekend was another one of those where you know got to shoot with Dylan and Tate, and you know those guys and my buddies from here in town, and um, just shooting my game this weekend, and I think it went a little better. So yeah, yeah, I I got just got to get everybody out of my head and just shoot my game. Do you feel like a, uh, like a little bit of pressure being the new guy? I'm doing air quotes right now. Uh, yeah. When you're around like a Terran or a Max or? Kind of. I guess no. I think they have more to lose, right? Like I'm, yeah. I'm just the new guy. Like if I come out with a win, like, hey, that, you got new new guy luck? I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Like, hey, good for him, right? Um, no, I don't. I, I actually feel like I have less pressure. Is growing especially locally, you know, um, if I go to a big match and I take second, everybody's like, what happened? And I'm like, well, no, these guys are good. I'm like, <laughs> I'm yeah. doing my best. I oh, man. Dude, I, I hate that when you talk to someone who uh, doesn't know anything about shooting. Yeah. And, you know, if in your case, you're like, yeah, I took second. They're like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's hundreds of people there. Yeah. <laughs> like, man, I shot lights out. Yeah. And I, I, I took second, you know. Oh, that's too bad. I'm like, no, I mean, like, yeah, I guess. Damn. No, I mean, I'm happy about that. <laughs> telling you about that because I'm happy. I, yeah, I got the plaque on my wall. <laughs> like, <laughs> all right, I guess I'll take it down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 uh, it's interesting different perspectives on, on things. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, I think that's the biggest gap today is just maturing and, and keeping people out of my head in the match. Mm -hmm. Not that they're getting in my head purposely. Sure. It's just, you know, you get to you get to shoot with guys you watch on TV, right? Yeah. That guys that, you know, as soon as I knew about shooting sports, I watched their videos. It was like, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. It was them, right? <clears throat> you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, the first real three gun I saw on TV was Clint uh, up church going head to head with Jerry Micklick on uh like shooter source video or something like that and so they were shooting their open guns open shotguns and i'm like well clint i'm gonna run a gun like clint so i'm not yeah. gonna run a, you know i don't want to run a tube gun uh but uh so i watched those two and then i got to shoot with them this year right right like those are cool things right like, you don't get to do that if you play baseball <laughs> you know you don't get to go you know play baseball with the guys that you look up to oh no um so we got a cool sport cool opportunities but um learning how to manage that mentally is, is still progress mm -hmm. something yeah it's definitely difficult to uh to try to you know shoot your game while you're watching like you said other people take like different risks and things like that yep. and then um and then you throw in the fact that you know these are people that you look up to and it yeah. does kind of mess with you a little bit yep yep which you know i shoot enough now where i know and i've had that bad experience a few times where i'm like you know good for them i'm glad it worked out mm -hmm. i'm not going to shoot it that way because that's not my game mm -hmm. right or whether that means leaning on shotgun leaning on pistol in a three gun match when there's option stages i'm going to shoot my game i'm going to walk up to the stage whatever feels right i'm going to do it mm -hmm. and uh you know i'm, I'm just going to hope that my skills and my comfort level with the guns that i'm choosing to use plays out on top you mm -hmm. know so i think it i think it will you know if i keep putting work in and and shoot my game you know i'll be all right yeah yeah what what do you think is like uh um one of the best pieces of advice you've ever received in the sport yep so it's simple i mean it's it's it changes the way that i shoot stages though and it's you know just shoot the sights right like because i always used to want to go oh, i gotta shoot slow on that target i gotta shoot fast on that target it's like no right you, you shoot the moment the sights are back where you want them right 
for me, I've got a dot, and so it's very clear when they're in the right spot. Right. You know, and so, yeah, I can shoot faster on that target because it's closer, but it's just because the sights are back on target, right? Like, so not looking at targets as they're fast shooting targets or slow shooting targets, just pull the trigger when the dot's on the target, right? Where you want to shoot it. And you can shoot as fast as you can settle that dot. Mm -hmm. And if that means you got to grip the gun harder or that means that you can tweak your ammo or you tweak your gun, you know, you, usually it's you, not the gun, but um, <laughs> fix that stuff. And you just get to shoot as fast as those sights are right back on target. And if you do that well, um, then, yeah, that was a fast target. Yeah, you did take slower hits, sh shots on that target, but it's just because you're shooting the sights. All right. You know, so. That's what I would do when I walk up to a stage. You know, uh, we, w we shot the all pistol stage uh -huh. uh, today. It was, uh, whatever, 60, 60 rounds of pistol and uh, no gun belt. No gun know. belt. It's a, it's a gun pickup type yeah. thing. You got to pick up your gun and then stuff your mags in your pocket or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. And so I walked up to that, and I only wanted to do a couple reloads, right? So right. I'm like, all right, I'm going to shoot headshots on everything right out of the gate, and I'm going to go one for one on steel. And so it's all about squeezing the trigger at the right time, you know, no, not rushing shots, clenching that grip. So, I mean, whole stage, all I'm thinking about is grip and, and shoot the sights. Right. You know, and just let everything else play out. Find your Smart. spots. <laughs> it's so basic, right? It's not complicated. <laughs> like, you, you know, you think, what's the best advice? It's like, well, this is going to be this is gonna be deep. No, yeah, just exactly. shoot when the sights are on the target. That's it. Yeah. So... That and then uh, some simple stuff like, hey, clean your guns, right? Mm -hmm. You know, how, you know how many guys come out with dirty guns to matches. Like I clean my guns uh, every night at a major. I clean them before I go out to any match, because if I ever have a malfunction on the clock, it's my fault. Right. If it's a dirty gun situation, right? So I, I put enough work and money into this thing that if I come to a major and my guns don't work because I chose not to wipe them down the yeah. night before. Like, I'm an idiot. You know, so. Well, especially after, it, like, rains, you know, and now it, like, uh, washes all that lube out or whatever. Yeah. And then uh, all it takes is just uh, lubing up a little bit, wiping it down, it. and then save you all the, the headache the next day. 30 minutes uh, at night, I could get them field stripped, cleaned, good to go back in, the, back in the bags and ready for the match. And I just have this level of confidence when I walk into a match that I know all my stuff's going to work, and I'm good. Just worry mm -hmm. about shooting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who do you think in this sport is unusually good at something that you wouldn't expect them to be? <laughs> unusually good at something you wouldn't expect. Um, well, so this weekend I shot with my buddy Nathan Payne. Uh -huh. um, big dude. Big uh, dude. Bigger than me, like as far as like jacked, like right. muscular dude. Um, and, you know, a lot of us bigger dudes, we struggle to keep up with some of the smaller dudes on the yeah. stages. Like and Michael Whitesides. Yeah. <laughs> Just wiry, right? Like moving. <laughs> fast like a spider monkey. <laughs> but, no, he's lights out fast, he right? Is? Yeah. Um, you know, there's a couple of guys like that. He's where agile, too. Absolutely. Uh, he's an athlete, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so, you know, he, he performs well on the stages. And so you, you can't. You can't underestimate people based on, you know, their physique or yeah. any of that stuff. When you look at a, you know, long field course or something like that and you watch some of these dudes move, it's like there's no way that guy can run that fast, right? <laughs> yeah. like, dang. Yeah, there, yeah there, there are dudes, you know, that, you know, grunt and groan all day when they're picking up steel and stuff like that. Yeah. But that buzzer goes <laughs> off and they're just, just gone. <laughs> Which is kind of cool to see, right? Yeah, it's great, man. Yeah, yeah. No, I feel the same way. I mean, my knees are going out, my back's sore, like, but on the clock, I don't think about any of that. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Yeah, I woke up yesterday with uh, one stage left to uh, shoot because I shot with the uh, ROs and I wasn't able to finish. Yep. I woke up yesterday and I could hardly even turn my neck. Like, I was just like a couple inches and I was, <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, maybe, Good luck. maybe if I go hide for an hour, I don't have to shoot right away. I can actually get my neck stretched out to where yeah. I can see stuff. But yeah, didn't absolutely did not notice it on the clock. Didn't have a problem shouldering yeah. the shotgun or getting yeah. on the uh, sights of the uh, rifle or anything like that. Yep. As soon as they say unload and show clear, though, it's all bad. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> I go to pick up my uh, my empty range bag. It's like, uh. yep, yep, yep. No, it's fun. Know. Yeah, I, uh, I I have some disc issues from. Um, it's actually from the fight, and I hurt my 
a couple of discs in my lower back. So those mm-hmm. bug me every once in a while. And then uh, tendonitis in my knees, which uh just a killer you know i should probably lose a little weight that'd probably help a little bit but yeah same here uh, yeah <laughs> but, but uh, you know again it's kind of cool on the clock you don't think about any of it you're yeah. all right yeah well josh you've uh you know you've come on strong like in the last year with like a lot of effort into it do you do you think that practical shooting is going to be a long-term thing for you or do you think like maybe they're you know eventually you're going to see that bass fishing is really cool <laughs> <laughs> and get all into that. Well, um, I don't know is the answer. Uh, I love this game. Um, the only reason I loved fighting, the only reason I stopped is I took a white collar sales gig, mm-hmm. right? Like I can't go in an office, meet with a business owner in a full suit and a black eye, right? right. Like he's not buying anything. Yes, these bruises are from fighting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's, that's not going to work. Um, so that's the only reason I gave it up and I missed it. Right. Like I right. coached a little while after I got out of it and then I stopped even coaching cause it, you know, I didn't get to fight. Right. I didn't get that payoff that. Yeah, head head. exactly. Um, it's tough. As long as I get that, that payoff of going head to head and competing. Um, I, I truly believe I'll do this as long as my body will let me, mm-hmm. you know, I love it. Well, mm-hmm. we look around a lot, uh, some of the guys on the, um, the range this weekend, this could feasibly be a, you know, 30 year yeah. game, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I shoot another 20 years. I mean, you know, I'm 35, right? Like, you know, Jerry's out here crushing it. He's <laughs> That's like what I'm saying, man. 62 or 63 or something. Yeah. I'm like, God dang it. He's smoking me on field courses. I'm like, yeah. how does he do it? Yeah. I don't know. So yeah, I could do it another 20 years. Who knows though, right? I mm-hmm. mean, it comes down to if, if for some reason it stops giving me that what I need to, when it comes to that head-to-head mm-hmm. competition piece, which I don't believe it will, but if it does, then I, I do believe I'll take something else up. I mean, that's just the way I'm wired. I, yeah. I got to get it, you know. Um, I When I took that sales management gig at work, I lost it at work, right? Um, and so I stayed in that about three and a half years. And uh, I, just this last month, I moved back out into the field sales because mm-hmm. I was sick of sitting in the office. Like, I didn't get that reward oh, of, okay. of going head-to-head yeah. and winning. Um, my team would win. That, that's great. You know, yeah. cool. Like, <laughs> we're going to hit our numbers. I'll get a bonus. Life is good. But, like, I didn't get that, that payout, you know. Uh, and uh, That little dopamine hit. Whatever it is. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I need it. Yeah. So um, I'm back in the field selling IT again, which is, which is good. Gives me that. You're happier now? Yeah, I love it. I mean, la- this last month, I, you know, I sp- spent probably meeting like 25 of the people that I know well from the my my career in business and CIOs and business executives having lunch, shooting sporting clays with them, you know, Sweet. playing a round or two of golf and like that's fun. Yeah, you know, definitely. And selling stuff. I mean, I like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, um, if you can look out to like maybe a couple years down the road i don't know how far you plan out like where do you want to take your uh shooting career yeah um i do plan out three so i plan everything out is the answer i find out where i want to go and then i reverse engineer it okay you know so that's let's talk about that process okay so um when i first got into shooting it was i would like to win local matches right i'd like Mm -hmm. to when I got smoked by all those guys in three gun, it was, <laughs> I would like to beat them. Uh, that That's my goal. And so figuring what that looks like, I, I gave myself like a year um, to be competitive in that space. And then I just assume, that, you know, I've got to do that dry fire every day. I've got to shoot each gun live fire every week in mm-hmm. practice. That was the goal at the time. Then I ended up just doing it every gun twice. And um, so I just reverse engineered it. It just started shooting the guns often enough to get good um, and doing the dry fire every day because I believed that that would get me to that goal, right? Um, if I'm looking three years out, uh, certainly my, my goal is to, to win a lot of majors. I mean, that's what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, winning local matches is fun. Winning majors is a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, th- that's that rush times 10, right? Right. And uh, so if I want to do that, <laughs> Well, first off, I get to get that long range thing figured out because it's a gap. I mean, it is. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, well, this this kind of match is not as big of a deal, but when yeah, you go there's to there's one like, long range stage. There's well, one yeah, stage and of long it's range. stage points, right? So right. if I if I capture fifty percent. 
50 points out of the 100 on that stage and I win eight other stages, I have 850 points, right? Mm -hmm. I'm still okay. If I do a total time match Mm -hmm. um, and I blow a stage by 50 seconds, I can't make 50 seconds up in eight stages. Right. Like, I better crush those stages. That's really hard to do. Yeah, it is hard to do. <laughs> I mean, 10 seconds up. Well, especially the way match records plan. They try to plan the <sighs> stages all taken at the same time so you yeah. can rotate through and yeah. there's not a big backup, right? I know. Um, so it's the long-range thing. That's that's certainly a gap. Um, uh, my One of my shooting goals is um, get better there and, and win some majors. But if I'm looking at an individual opportunity – um, I'm fighting real hard to, uh, with a goal of representing the U.S. next year in France. I'm, I would really like to shoot shotguns in France against the, cool. the Europeans. Um, so I'm talking to all the guys that are making that happen and trying to get on that team. Um, if if I can get some way, shape, or form, make that happen, uh, I will. Uh, I'll be putting the rest of the guns down for four or five months next year and just shoot shotguns. Hmm. And uh, you know, I mean it. Only shoot shotgun. Only shoot shotgun. <laughs> yeah, and it's like production shotgun because over there it's 10-round mags. Oh, is that right? Yeah, so every time you move, you reload, right? And, oh, weird. And there's no shoots on everything. It's Ipsy right, shotgun. Right, right. And so you're running like full chokes constantly. Uh, it's a different game, mm-hmm. but I love shooting open shotgun. And, uh, you know, I think that's a space that I can play pretty well in. Um, it's my strongest gun of the three. And uh, so if there was ever a chance for me to make a world team, it'd be shotgun, right? I don't belong on the rifle team <laughs> or the pistol team. <laughs> like, those guys shooting those guns at that match, are uh, they deserve to be there. Um, and uh, so I'm trying to make that happen for next year. Um, but certainly at some point in my shooting career, I would like to represent the U.S. at the world. Sweet. Yeah, yeah I think that'd be pretty cool. That's a great goal. Yeah. So trying to make that happen politically and uh through shooting performance this year mm-hmm. right you know shooting every shotgun match i can i can find that i can afford to go to um shooting every shotgun side match that i can find um so yeah just trying I to gotcha. win them. yeah cool that's cool so um in in open or i guess you can say in, in three gun in general but specifically in open since you're our Resident open expert yeah. on, the, okay. on the podcast. <laughs> um, what uh, what mistakes do you see that are most common, even, even among like the top people in the sport? Yep. So um, I don't know about the top people in the sport. The top people in the sport got to figure it out. I mean, for the most part, you look at your eighty percent guys though, mm-hmm. and the, the gap in open um, that will take you from probably eighty to ninety percent. Um, it, it's really practicing the fundamentals. A lot of open shooters don't practice the reloads and some of that stuff. It's like, and it takes you six seconds. It takes me two, <laughs> you know, like, or whatever, unloaded yeah. starts, things like that. Like, or they don't plan the reloads effectively. Right. It's like, you have to reload sometime during this stage. Right. Like don't, if you have 24 rounds in your shotgun and you go dry, like you did something wrong, <laughs> like stop that. Right. Find a spot, reload that gun. And so stage planning, um, more like the tack op guys, right? Like, I mean, any pistol stage, I'm reloading the same spot that all, everyone else is, even though I have 29 in my mag and they have 23, right? right? Because I'm not going to go dry. I'm not going to run out. Right. Like, if there's plenty of time for them to reload there, I'd probably reload there too. I mean, so, you know, it's shooting the, the stage realistically, not just, oh, I'm an open you yeah, know, yeah. you know, I've got rounds. No, you don't. You run out. Like, yeah. you can pull the trigger pretty fast. You run out. I've seen guys do that when I when I shot uh, local USPSA matches. Dudes that would shoot open would, uh, you know, oh, I'm going to use the big stick for this one. And, yeah. you know, they throw in the one that I don't know how many rounds of pistol it would hold. 29, 30. 29, 30. Okay, so they throw in the 29, 30. And then uh, some, of <laughs> some of them would do that old rookie move where they didn't even bother reloading their spare mag so now they got like five rounds in there <laughs> and then they do the uh, the reload like uh can't see me doing this on the podcast but i'm doing slow-mo as i'm <laughs> air gunning a reload here you're doing a fine job of it too. thank thank you <laughs> and then uh they only have you know five mm. rounds in there so yeah now they're hosed yeah it's that and then it's hey you know my other guns run this ammo my open guns should too like no like they're different guns uh-huh. like they have comps and muzzle brakes and uh, they're not designed to run the same ammo that you run in your other guns. 
So you better run the right shells, the right ammo. If you don't, it's your fault if it goes wrong, right? I see a lot of malfunctions on the stages on shotguns specifically where guys are running stuff that does not belong in an AK pattern shotgun or an AR pattern shotgun. Like, you can't get those to run. Like, sure, they run when you're at home by yourself. <laughs> Everything does. But when yeah. you come to a match, it's over, right? Like, the moment it has to work, it won't. Uh, so, you know, that, that's a problem. And I see it all the time. You know, 1,200 foot per second, one ounce in an open shotgun. Like, take that and throw it out the window. Like, yeah. get, Is that not good enough? No. No? What do you need to no. shoot? So typically it's on the dram scale. Mm -hmm. So three, three and a quarter dram, three and a half dram to run most of those open shotguns. You can get them to run lighter, uh, yes, but you, you got to understand. So on an open shotgun with a 30-round or 20-round box mag, mm -hmm. you have spring tension pushing yep. those shells into the bottom of the carrier. Mm -hmm. And so if the ammo is not stronger than the spring tension on the carrier, uh, it's not going to eject that shell. Oh, yeah. Right? yeah. And so you're battling that, not the gun. So, yeah, it runs with a 12-round mag, sure. But when you put a 20 in there, forget about it, right? Right. And so you just you find the line where it'll run, and then you go a little hotter, mm -hmm. and then you're good. And then you just stick with that, you know. I'm running one and one, out, one, and one eighth ounce, like 1235s because my gun likes them, mm -hmm. and they hit hard, and they're 1,200 wood run. So I'm running 1235s. Right. You know. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, in in tac ops or or uh, factory practical, what what the hell is it? Limited, whatever. <laughs> tube, tube shotguns. <laughs> yep. Those tube guns. You know, I find a lot of people like, uh, uh, oh yeah, I've got these, uh, you know, 1145s. Yeah. And I, I milled my bolt and I polished this up yeah. and that. And I'm like, is 1145 really that much different than 1200? No. You know, like half the time, I. I load like 1200s and 1250s just yeah. like, hey, look what's on clearance at, yeah. at Academy. And yeah. you can't even tell the difference when the, the buzzer goes off. But people swear that, oh, yeah, the lighter load, the faster you'll be able to go. It's like, well, toughen up a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't believe presses. that's the case. Uh, <laughs> that and then, you know, in open, guys are tinkerers, right? A lot, yeah. of, a lot of the open guys are like, yeah, you know, I got, got these new springs. I put them in. It's like today? <laughs> you know, we're at a major match. What are you doing, right? Or... Yeah, I'm gonna try these new slugs. It's like, oh my god! Oh yeah, yeah. slugs yeah. are the greatest. Come, come with gear that's proven that you know you've run. Once it works, leave it alone. Other mm -hmm. than cleaning it, and uh, you know you get your open guns running. You know because that's the impression, right? The world believes open guns don't run. Right. My guns run. Yeah. Um, they do. Like anyone that shoots with me will see my guns run lights out all day long. Uh, it's because they're clean. I run the right ammo in them. And uh, they're they're decent guns to start with, you know. Uh, so that's the ticket. <laughs> you know, w one thing uh, you mentioned slugs. One thing that I always crack up at is uh, guys will ship, you know, long range ammo because I know the zero of this long yep. range ammo. I know yep. this works in my gun. I know this, and uh, then they'll get to uh, the match location. And the first question they ask is, uh, "Hey, where around here can you get slugs?" Yeah. <laughs> Really, yeah. dude? <laughs> yeah. This match only has four required slugs. You couldn't have shipped a five yeah. pack. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah, I've I'm I've got a lot of little quirks about, you know, structure and run the same stuff all the time and so I'll literally I'll ship all of my ammo for every every match. Mm -hmm. I just I have stuff that works and uh I, why would I want to risk yeah. my guns? You know it works. Why, why are you going to? That's it. That's what it. it takes a little planning. It may, might cost a couple bucks to ship it down there, but when you get there, again, I've spent $1,000 to go to this match, right. right? Room and flight and all of that, and I'm not willing to spend 40 bucks to ship the ammo that I know works. So, you know, that's nuts. So yeah. I'm going to do it every time. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not protecting that investment, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Yep, and it is an investment, right? I mean, even if it's just mental, right? Because I, I want to feel like I won, yeah, right? And I don't want to feel like this was a wasted trip. Even if it's a, you know, this one's in my backyard, the Nordic Vortex match, right? Mm -hmm. I'm 10 minutes west of here. But if I spend three days away from my family, right, take a day off of work, do all of that stuff, and then I don't run the right ammo in my gun, then it doesn't work, you know. That, that's crazy. I'm not going to do that. It is crazy. Yeah. So... I don't do it. I, I always shoot the same stuff. I know it's going to work. My guns always run. And I get a lot of compliments that I've got open guns that run. I'm like, <laughs> I've got old ones that run. I've got new ones that run. It's like you just got to get them running, leave them alone. Right. Yeah. 
Well, so you mentioned, uh, you know, you're kind of like, uh, uh, um, we were talking about the addictive personality of getting yep. into stuff. Are, so you're already that way with, with cleaning as well, or you just know that's something I need to do? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you couldn't like white glove my guns and come away clean. I mean, mm-hmm. they're not like that. I just know exactly what I need to do. And in my head, I can't go to sleep at night if they're not right. done, if I've got a match in the morning, you know. So, um, no, they're not, they're not whistle clean, but, you know, it's absolutely a tick. Like, I have to do it mm-hmm. or I wouldn't feel comfortable coming out to the match. Gotcha. And yeah. that probably helps with, like, your mental preparation. It does. Too. It does. Confidence walking into a stage. Yeah. Like, you know, right before stage, you know, I'll pull out the drum, right? I run drums on my shotgun. And sure enough two, three guys are like, is that going to work? It's like, I'm, I'm about to shoot my gun uh, on the stage and I can confidently say yes. Right. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, it'll shoot lights out. Yeah. Watch, you know, and just knowing that and not being embarrassed yeah. by it because I didn't do my part, you know, it's, it's nice. literally the reason I bought a new shotgun last year, you know, cause I had yep. a Mossberg 930 <laughs> and, I, and I hear yep. you, I hear you laughing, yep. but uh, I had, no, I've had a 930 and, and it was well, fine. Mine, mine ran. Yeah. And, People don't believe me, but yeah. it did, it, <laughs> I got all kinds of videos for you uh, to, sh- to show you, but it ran. But, yeah. you know, I had so many, even ROs as you're stepping in the box. Like, I know. Oh, you got that jam, bro. You think it's going to run? <laughs> it's like, you're about to get fucking butt strokes here. <laughs> and I try not to swear on my own oh, show. But I know, man. So this weekend, you know, I mean, these are my buddies, too. So, like, it's yeah. early ROs. I know all these guys, you know. Um, so they don't give me a hard time, but. Um, get out to some of the matches, and yeah, you literally every stage you walk up to. I haven't seen one of those. Does yours work? It's yeah, like, yeah, it exactly. works. How about you ask me after we yeah, shoot, no kidding. and you just find out because it's going to work, mm-hmm. and you can watch. Um, but yes, so there's that. So that extra piece of confidence <laughs> right before you go, I'm like, hell yeah, it runs. Like, yeah. watch, yeah. Um, which you know that, that's a good deal. And the other piece is, I'm, I'm an ambassador for several companies in the industry Mm -hmm. and it's my responsibility to do my part to make sure their guns, their ammo, their optics, all of those things work because they do. Mm -hmm. And if I don't do my job and keep them clean, put batteries in them, do all this stuff that, you know, different things need, like I'm not a good ambassador to them. That's true. Because I'm going to walk up there and they'll be like, oh, that gun didn't run. It's like, well, if I didn't clean it for two weeks, you know, but that's not the story they're going to leave with. They're no. going to leave with the story that it didn't work, yep. right? And so uh, it's my job, uh, work, you know, working with these guys, partnering with good companies that I do my part, you yeah. know? So I, I take that serious. That's, that's a very good point. So you were talking about, like, the mental aspect of having um, your guns clean and everything. Mm-hmm. And it uh, made me think back to, you know, cage fighting. There's probably a ton of mental preparation that goes into Oh, yeah into um yep. a mat or fight yep how does that translate into three gun and then maybe tell us what your your mental preparation is like yeah um well it it's it's very very straightforward like before i'd fight you know i mean for instance a, a round in a fight is five minutes right mm-hmm. you do three five minute rounds and so as it's a training long time it is a long time <laughs> yeah now it's it doesn't feel like a long time if you're in terrific shape, yeah. right? And you happen to be winning. Um, that that helps. <laughs> Getting pounded <laughs> probably feels longer. Oh, I'm sure, right? I, I did lose a fight, uh, and I did get pounded, and it did feel like it was a long time. Uh, but most of them, I was on top. Um, but So the prep part, right? So if we knew we had to do five minutes at a time, in training we did ten, right? If I, It's the same way that I train for this game. If I know that I'm going to have to take a 20-yard popper, I'm going to be comfort, comfortable at a 40-yard popper, right? Yeah. Like, I shoot slugs at 130 at home. Like, I know I can hit my BC zone steel, lights out offhand with my slugs. Hmm. Um, I, I practice for worst-case scenario, just like I practiced for worst-case scenario in the fighting game, right? You always want to start where it's worse. Like, I, I'd, we'd practice a lot of stuff before a fight. I'd be on my back because I know I'm going to re- practice or fight a wrestler. I know he's going to be able to take me down in that situation. Yeah. And so I'm going to have to get out from on my back. Uh, in this game, it's the same spot. I know I'm going to have to shoot a 5x5 five five at 30 yards. You know, they're going to throw something like that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, if I can't hit it, you know, that's a bad day. Um, you'd think I'd be driven a little more on the long range. <laughs> <laughs> Man, so my, my big limitation, I have to drive an hour and a half today uh-huh. to shoot beyond 130 yards. Okay. 
And so I get that in, but so I drive an hour and a half to get there. So it's three hours in the car to shoot the long range. And, you know, so I get that in probably twice a month right now. And I'm to a point comfortably on long range that I can shoot. I know what all the crosshairs are going to hit. I know my ammo. I know my gun. Um, then they throw you on that reverse rooftop, right? Like yeah. they did at this match. <laughs> and I'm wobbling. I'm just praying. Oh, come on. No. Yeah. So and now I just got to get good at it. I know yeah. what to do now. But, um, but, yeah, it's planning for the worst case scenario. That's the deal, right? And put yourself in a spot in practice that you hope you don't get to in a match. Um, for instance, dry fire, um, standing reloads. I can slam a standing reload like crazy on every one of my guns. Mm -hmm. I hope I never need to do one in a match, right? right? But I can do one. I can slam it too, right? And so that confidence level lets me take that extra shot. If I'm moving, I'm leaving a position, and, or you know, I know I've got one or two left in the gun, I can take it comfortably knowing that, I can get that gun reloaded in a second, right? Um, and so, yeah, worst case scenario practice. That's where I live for mental prep. Mm -hmm. Just, I mean, then when you see it, when you get on the range, or when I'd see it when I was in a fight, um, hey, this is no big deal. I've been in worse spots. Yeah, you know, not so a big deal. Sounds like you're like building the confidence mm -hmm. to make those shots because you've made worse, yeah, or farther or tighter shots before. Yep, yep, for sure. Um, these guys up here for. Minnesota three gun group. I mean, this is an accurate representation of what a local looks like, yeah. right? And so they'll throw five by fives way out there. Uh, you know, There's a lot of a lot of accuracy and marksmanship required at this match. There is, there absolutely is, and there is traditionally with this this group. Um, these guys are really good at challenging you. Um, mm -hmm. Jomar's known for his mind bending stages. He'll literally not give you enough rounds to go on two on target for everything, and he'll put you know. 22 targets out there and you're allowed to have you know one mag or whatever it is so you got to shoot all alphas right? oh no kidding he'll do I'll, uh, <laughs> he shoots heavy so i don't know what is you know but yeah but th that's the kind of stuff we get used to here in a local and so if you can survive a local here in minnesota you're going to be doing just fine when you leave and you go to some major somewhere else mm -hmm. unless it comes long range again because we just don't have Right. that facility here um yeah you know the other thing i noticed about the uh the long range here at force lake sportsman's club is that it's in a pit right yeah. yep. uh necessary because of the neighborhoods nearby yep. and you have to shoot through tubes before you um actually get to the field part of it mm -hmm. if you're like a normal member or whatever you're right. not shooting like a practical match um no wind over there because you're in a hole mm -hmm. and you're surrounded by trees now you come shoot in uh, in Texas. Yeah. <laughs> Those boys can shoot yeah. some rifle. I know they can. Lights <laughs> out, right? Yeah. I know and they, they can. And they know the wind. They they've dealt with it. And like, if they have a calm day in a practice session, it's like, huh, this is weird. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yep. And, you know, I shoot with a couple of guys uh, that have been helping me a little bit with rifle. I help them a little on pistol, and um, they've been helping me learn some of that wind, learn some of the mirage off the barrel after you're hot, learn mm -hmm. some of that thing. Those things. And uh, it's been helping. I mean, I, I, I'm learning the game. But, yeah, those Texas boys are lights out. Yeah. And it's all flat and windy down yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. You're shooting that. You can come in. They don't have any trees to hide stuff behind, so they got to yeah. put it real far away. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably true, right? <laughs> going to make it hard. Let's put it over there. <laughs> yeah. Nobody can shoot that far. Uh, yeah. Watch this. Yep. Yep, pretty much. Yep. Well, Josh, uh, a couple questions to ask uh, all my guests. Yeah. Where do you see the sport of three-gun headed? Well, I certainly hope in a more mainstream stream direction. I love watching juniors come out. Mm -hmm. I love watching juniors shoot and be successful. And I, and I really hope that we're able to grow this into a more mainstream sport, almost like the fighting became. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I mean, you... Well, it's amazing that when you take, like, something as violent and bloody as... Yeah. Uh, MMA or cage fighting, and you know now you can go to the Buffalo Wild Wings and watch it on Thursday night. Yeah, I can talk to my pastor about it. Right? Yeah, he's like, "Hey, did you watch the fights <laughs> last weekend?" I'm like, "Yeah, did you?" <laughs> yeah, he did. Right? You know, I mean, that's that. It's a mainstream sport at this point. People realize that you don't actually hate the guy you're across from, right? Sure. It's an athletic event. Yes. Um, in the same way we've that we've been doing it for hundreds and well, yeah, thousands of I years mean, now. Gladiators, right? Yeah. I mean, in the same way that when we come out, we're not training for, you know, war. Yeah. We're, we're shooting at paper <clears throat> targets, and we're testing our marksmanship, our athleticism, and this is a sport just like that, mm -hmm. right? It, and it's just not mainstream yet. So um, 
I hope I hope we get there. We have very polar opposites in our country today, right? Yeah, we big have, time. We have those that um, appreciate and respect the things that we, we choose to do with our free time and others that don't, right? Um, so I, I certainly hope it's in a direction that makes it more mainstream. You know? uh, as do I. Well, Josh, we uh <laughs> We've got hungry teenagers. We've got hungry teenagers here. <laughs> you see, juniors, right? We've got to support the sport. Absolutely. We've got to feed those boys. Feed those kids. Well, Josh, we're, uh, we're waiting for scores now, and they're going to be coming out pretty soon here. Yeah. And then uh, we're going to uh, celebrate with everyone and, and uh, wrap up this wonderful weekend that we had here. If you could leave the audience with one thought or one piece of advice, what would it be? Well, I'd say you get – out what you put in and that's life that's shooting that's whatever right so um if, if you really want to make this thing take a run at this thing place higher on the you know, on the scoreboard whatever um you get out what you put in so if you want to do better put more in and uh you know it'll happen for you uh if it's not get some training um because there's a lot of guys out there that'd be willing to work with you mm -hmm. right there's guys up here in minnesota and myself included, that work with guys from time to time, just giving them a hand or taking them, helping them to get to the next, next level. That's, you can find that anywhere, right? All right. If you can't, ask. You know, somebody will point in the right direction. But um, you put the hustle in, put the work in, and, and results speak for themselves, right? I mean, that's yeah. shooting and that's everything else. That's life. Um, so just don't show up on the weekend after you, you know, didn't take your guns out the last two weeks and then get pissed because you didn't place well. <laughs> Got right. rust on the barrel yeah. and everything from sitting in the case. <laughs> yeah, so just put the hustle in, right? right. Work hard and make it happen uh, if, you want it, if you want something more than you got. That's it, you know. Um, you know that's, that was my sales management message for the team for four years, right, as they were going, hey, I'd like a bigger base salary. I'm like, well, I'd like you to sell more stuff, right? <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the deal. Like, how about you work harder? Um, and, uh, you know, that's the same message I give to some of the newer guys that are like, man, how do I get better at this thing? And it's like, well, you practice more, right. you work hard, right? Like if this was your job, right. Mm -hmm. Um, what would you do like to be successful? Okay. So it's not your job. Got it. It's your hobby. So how much are you willing to invest in your hobby to make sure that that's successful? Okay. So do that. Right. I mean, put that in and don't take shortcuts. Don't skip it. Um, you, you get out what you put in. So, I mean, th that's the message. Uh, life or shooting or anything other than that, yeah. I mean, just work hard. Make it happen. I like it, man. That's uh, it's a good final message, good thought to uh, to leave the audience with. Josh, man, this has been a lot of fun, dude. And I really appreciate your uh, your time and, and uh, coming and chatting with us while we're finishing the match. Everyone's being social and everything. It's been fun. This has been cool, man. So thank you very much for your time and for sharing your knowledge with the uh, the Three Gun audience. Thanks, Dave. Hey, before you take off, check out the show notes at threegunshow.com slash episode 141 for the links to everything that we discussed in the podcast and to purchase your own Three Gun Show logo tee. Uh, we recorded this one at the 2017 Nordic Vortex Trigun where Josh took first in open and high overall as well. So congratulations to Josh on his win in his home state. As usual, this podcast is brought to you by Armalite. Armalite likes the community that we are building here at the Three Gun Show, and we have partnered up for 2017. To be sure this is a win for you as well, Armalite has allowed me to get special pricing for listeners on their line of Three Gun Rifles, both the 13.5 and the 18-inch, as well as their competition handguards, gas blocks, and tunable muzzle brakes. If you're interested in a 13.5-inch rifle but we're kind of on the fence for whatever reason, I say go for it. I've been shooting one in uh, competitions, and I'm totally digging it. Topped with the uh, Vortex Gen 2 Viper PST, I give it thumbs up. If you're in the market for a rifle or components to build your own, just email me, dave at 3 gunshowcom and I will hook you up. I'm back on the road now, traveling the country, and bringing the good times back to you in podcast form, and I will have all of this Armalite gear with me at matches for you to check out. So when you see me at a match, just ask, and I'll be happy to show you. And you can even shoot mine if you like. A quick reminder that if you enjoyed this episode of the podcast, subscribe in iTunes, Google Play, Podcast Addict, or wherever you get your podcast content so you always get the very latest. And double check that you've got that subscribe button clicked there because we're putting out a couple shows a week now. And uh, sometimes iTunes doesn't get them all. So make sure you have the subscribe on there. And while you're there, tap five stars, 
leave a review tell me what you like about the show tell me what you liked about this show or what you want to see in the future as always thank you so much for downloading listening and subscribing to the show i'm dave hartman and i'll see you on the range Unload show clear.